In this video, you're gonna learn how to make your very own custom GPT. Now you might be wondering, what even is a custom GPT and why should I care? So I like to think of regular chat GPT like going to a really nice restaurant. The chef is really talented and can probably make anything that you want, but they don't know that you hate cilantro, that you like your food extra spicy, and that you're allergic to shellfish. Every time you order, you gotta explain all of your preferences from scratch. On the other hand, a custom GPT is like having a private chef that lives in your kitchen. They know that you only drink oat milk, that you're trying to eat more protein, and that if you don't eat any food by 6 p.m., that you get super hangry. They know your preferences, your schedule, and your dietary restrictions, so when you say, make me something healthy for dinner, they know exactly what that means for you specifically. In essence, a custom GPT allows you to train ChatGPT to do one specific function exactly the way you want it to. So rather than me trying to explain it, it's probably easier if I show you a few examples. But before we dive in, if you're interested in learning more about AI, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. All right, so let's dive into ChatGPT. So one thing to make note of here before we get into it is that in order to use custom GPTs, you actually need to be on one of ChatGPT's paid plans. So free users of ChatGPT will not be able to access custom GPTs. So with that out of the way, you'll need to first go to where it says GPTs on the left-hand side here, and that'll take you to this area. And you can see a few examples of some custom GPTs here. For example, SciSpace is one that specializes in doing scientific research. There's one from Canva that's specializing in graphic design. We have one here for astrology. So if you wanna check out your horoscopes and do that kind of thing, you have this option here. And there's another one here as a fitness coach. So if you wanna have this GPT specifically trained on you, your physique, your fitness goals, and help you come up with workout plans, you can have custom GPTs that are specialized in those specific tasks and those specific roles. So hopefully you're starting to see a few examples here and what you can do in terms of building out custom GPTs. I'll also show you an example of a custom GPT that I made so you can see one of these in action. So this is Korai, the prompt genie. This is a custom GPT that I made that is trained specifically on creating prompts that follow the castle prompt framework. Now I did a full breakdown of this framework in my last YouTube video, which I'll throw on the screen now. So you can check that out after this video if you want to. But the TLDR of that video is that the six key components of a perfect prompt are character, action, setting, tone, lore, and expression. Now this is all well and good, but that's a lot of shit to remember every time you wanna create a prompt. So I did what any lazy, I mean, smart person would do and I created a custom GPT to help do it for me. Hence, Quarai, the prompt genie. So the way it works is we can just basically come in here and use this conversation starter that says, help me craft a prompt. And here Quarai will essentially respond to us and ask what we want to create a prompt about. So for the sake of this example, in this video, we're gonna actually be creating another custom GPT that's gonna specialize in creating hooks for social media content. So we can even ask Quarai here to help us create the prompt for that custom GPT. So with that being said, let's go ahead and ask Korai. Okay, great. So Korai is gonna basically go through and give a full breakdown based on the castle framework on character, action setting, tone, lore, and expression, and then take all those key components and put it together into one finalized prompt. So you can basically go through here and continue to work with it, iterate it, give some feedback. You can kind of get an idea of how this specific custom GPT works. Our next step here is to actually go through and create our own custom GPT. So in order to do that, what you're gonna do is go back to the GPTs tab, and then we're gonna click this create button here. So there's two options in terms of creating your custom GPT. You can either use the create tab here or the configure tab. So I personally prefer the configure tab as it gives us a little bit more control over actually building this out. The create tab is more just conversational. We can kind of talk to it, just say basically what we said to Korai. So, okay, so now it's gonna ask to give the uh, GPT a name. How about Hookmaster? So it'll basically go through and, and ask you a set of questions to help configure the, the GPT. On the other hand, you can just configure it manually. Here are the things that we're gonna need. The, an image, we're gonna need a name, a description, specific instructions, and some conversation starters. Optionally, we can add a knowledge base to train the GPT on this specific topic. We can configure the capabilities, and then we can configure actions. So we'll come back to these in just a second, but basically what I did was, rather than going through the create area, I actually went through an iterative process with Quarai to create all of the inputs for all these fields for this particular GPT. I put that together here, 
So what I like to do with my custom GPTs is almost build them out as characters with their own backstories and personalities that fit into the theme of my school community called AI Quest. Each of my custom GPTs is almost like a, a character that fits into the world that I'm building there. So in this case, we have Valura, the hook weaver, and you can see a photo of Valura here. She's wielding her hook staff. So the idea here is that she can kind of wave her hook staff at any boring old content and turn it into something that's gonna be viral and scroll stopping. So you can see here, we have a full on uh, character here with uh, her role and archetype. So Valura is a radiant whisper sized enchantress from the realm of resonance, a mystical plane where ideas flicker like fireflies and only the most magnetic ones are spun into virality. Her role is to distill signal from noise, using her hook staff to transmute average thoughts into scroll stopping openers, lines, and structures. So pretty awesome. Um, we go through her primary function, her style and personality, her magical tool. You definitely don't need to go into like this much backstory and character building to create your custom GPTs. But again, I like to do it because I like to have a little fun with it. Moving on to the areas that we actually need. Number one, we have our name. So let's take this back into our builder. So Valera the hook weaver is gonna be our name. We give it a description. So let's paste this in. So a viral hook enchantress from the realm of resonance who helps creators craft scroll stopping hooks, openers and content and spells for any platform. Amazing, we have our system instructions. So this is the most important part. This is where we tell the custom GPT exactly how we want it to operate. And in here, we can even include things like opening message and things like closing message, for example. So this is where we wanna get really, really specific in what how we want this to actually perform. And we'll come back to this in, in a minute here. Finally, we have our conversation starter. So in this case, I'm just gonna add, help me craft a hook, because that's ultimately what we're trying to do here. And you could add in other things here, but this is how it's gonna show up. And people that are interacting with this custom GPT can just click on this to start the conversation. So once all of these have been configured, the one other thing I'll add here is gonna be the photo. So I'm gonna upload a photo since I already have one created. Wonderful. All right, so now this is already looking pretty good. We can also add a knowledge base here or add items to our knowledge base. So in this case, I'm gonna upload a file. All right, so I have a document here that has a thousand viral hooks across a ton of different content styles and categories and industries and so on and so forth. So we can train Valera on a thousand of these different viral hook examples. So she can reference that across, you know, this database of viral hooks and use those to help craft really viral hooks for any type of content that you give her. So now that we've got that configured, we'll move on to capabilities. So this is basically just indicating what we want this custom GPT to be able to do based on our use case. So the first one is web search. So if we want to be able to give this GPT ability to access live information from the internet, we can check this on. If we only want it to reference the knowledge that it's in its database and not look outside of that, then we could check this off. Next we have Canvas. So if you wanna be able to use that Canvas feature of ChatGPT within your custom GPT, you can check this on. Next we have the image generation. If we want your custom GPT to be able to generate images, you know, if it's creating logos, graphic designs, or just to enhance the overall experience with some visual elements, we can check this on. And then the last one is the code interpreter. So if you're doing anything related to code or data analysis, uh, you can check this on. So this is gonna to be totally up to you based on what you're trying to build in your specific use case. But for this specific use case, I'm gonna leave these first three checked on, the last one checked off. And and then the last thing to note here is the actions. This is gonna be a little bit more advanced. Actions basically gives you the ability to connect your custom GPT to other third-party tools through APIs and basically allowing you to either pull information or send information to other applications or tools or software platforms. This is gonna be a little bit more advanced, a little outside of the scope of this video, but if that's something that you're interested in learning more about, uh, just drop a comment letting me know. And this might be a video that I make sometime in the future if enough of you are interested in learning more about about this. And the last thing here is just the additional settings. So there's one setting in here, uh, and this is basically saying use conversation data in your GPT to improve our models. I usually leave this uh, unchecked just to keep the data for people that are interacting with this GPT as private as possible. But again, this is going to be totally up to you. So now that we've configured all of this, the next step here is going to be to actually try to test it out and see how this is performing. So we could say, all right, let's spend some scroll stopping gold. What are we working with? A hot take, a how to, a big idea you wanna spark, hit me with the topic and the vibe and I'll conjure your first 10 hooks. Boom, let's go. Let's give her an idea of some topic. My girlfriend recently started uh, crocheting. She, she started learning about a month ago and she's been absolutely killing it. So she wants to make a piece of content that's showcasing all the stuff she's made in her first month of crocheting. So let's, let's maybe ask about that. Okay, so we'll say, I just started learning how to crochet a month ago and I wanna make a reel showcasing what I've made in my first month. So she's gonna go through here um, hook variations for your one month of crochet reel. So let's look through a few of these examples. So I've only been crocheting for 30 days, but look at this, um, shock and transformation, uh, from tangled yarn to this, 
Here's my first month of crochet before and after. Uh, day one, I couldn't even chain. Day 30, watch this magic, glow up storytelling. So she's going through here and basically giving us a ton of ideas of these different hooks that we can use for that reel. And even telling us, you know, which of these frameworks that she's using based on that knowledge base of a thousand plus hook examples. And as you can see here, you know, there's already a lot of really solid ideas here that you could just use straight away out of the box. We can continue to ask her for more ideas. We can refine this. She's even taking it one step further and not only giving us the hook, but giving us a suggested open line and format. So she's saying, here's everything I made it in my first month of crochet from tangled messes to handmade cuteness. Then flash early attempts, build up to your favorite project and end with your proudest piece and a wink call to action, should I keep going? And then she'll, she'll really help you build this out. So when it comes to building custom GPTs, it's gonna be a really iterative process and don't expect that your first attempt is gonna work perfectly. You're more likely than not gonna have to go back to the drawing board and make some adjustments to your instructions to get it to work the way that you want it to. But I'd say even just this, out of the box is already working pretty well. A pro tip here, if you wanna create a custom GPT that you're using as somewhat of a lead magnet, you could even add custom instructions for once a user is kind of done interacting with the custom GPT that you can include a link to your website or include some sort of a call to action. If someone's interested in learning more about your product or your business, or if someone got value out of interacting with that GPT and generate more leads and more sales that way as well. Now that we kind of have a rough uh, idea of this, at least a MVP, minimum viable product working version of this. The next step here is gonna be to actually uh, create. So we're gonna click the create button. And now this is gonna give us the options for sharing it. You have three options here. Number one is gonna be only me. So if you want this to just be for personal use and no one else gets access to it, you can make it only me. If you want it to be anyone with the link, you can basically share it with anyone that you want, whether that's gonna be with friends, with colleagues, coworkers, or with people in your private community. In this case, Valura, I will be sharing with my private community in AI Quest. Again, it's completely free to join, at least at the time of this recording. So if you wanna grab a copy of Valura and be able to interact with her to help create custom hooks, I'll leave the link in the description for you to check that out. Or you can go with option three, which is the GPT store. So that's what we were looking at earlier. If you wanna make it open and public for anyone to be able to access, you can open it up to the GPT store. But in this case, uh, I'm just gonna click anyone with the link, click save, and then that's gonna give me the link that I can just copy this and then share it with whoever I want. So we can click view GPT. All right, now we can see Valura in my list of GPTs here. So if you ever needed to make any adjustments, you can come back to GPTs. You can click on my GPTs. This is gonna show you a list of, of your GPTs. And then you can click on edit GPT and then that's gonna take you back to the editor that you can always come back here, make adjustments. If it's not working exactly the way that you want it to, or if you wanna refine it, make improvements, adjustments to it, you can always come back to the editor, keep iterating on it until it's uh, functioning exactly the way that you want it to. So that is pretty much it in terms of building out your custom GPT. The one other thing I will mention is that if you're interested in some additional ideas of other custom GPTs that you can build, I built out a full on prompts database here that has a bunch of ready-made prompts to build out a variety of different uh, custom GPTs across a number of different use cases. There's also 250 plus ready-made prompt templates here that follow that exact castle framework that I was talking about earlier. So again, this is gonna be a free resource that's available in my community, AI Quest. Link is in the description if you wanna grab that. Hopefully this is all starting to make sense and you're starting to see the potential in what you can build for your own use case. If you found this video to be helpful in any way, shape or form, please do me a huge favor and drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel for more AI videos like this. Also, don't forget to check out my last video on the Castle Prompt Framework. Again, that'll show up somewhere on the screen now. And with all that being said, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video or in the AI Quest community. Peace.